Good evening, RISD family, and welcome to Parent University, where we will grow, connect, learn, and succeed. My name is Miguel Benitez, and I'm the new RISD Family Engagement Director. I am grateful for the opportunity to work with you. We are very excited about continuing our journey to elevate family engagement with an end goal of increasing student achievement across the district. Your meaningful uh, engagement will make a significant impact in the lives of our children. Uh, and before I go on, I wanna talk about uh, interpretation. We have interpretation uh, that's available. And so I'm gonna walk a little bit through that process for you. So to access the language, uh, please use your mouse, uh, use it to hover uh, at the bottom of the page. And when you go there, a menu will open. Please find the globe and hover or click on it. Uh, you can click on the language of your choice when it opens up to listen to the presentation. If you're on a mobile, tap the screen. All right, so I would like to introduce uh, our team of interpreters for today. We have Ms. Teresa Ordonez, Myra Duran, Mayra Duran, and Alejandra Phillips. So they'll be available to assist with your questions and remember to, and remember to use the chat feature. All right, today's session will be presented by our, our I team led by CTO Chief Technology Officer Henry Hall, Robin Gunter, Director of Instructional Technology, Lydia Krupp, uh, Instructional Technology Specialist, and Catherine Medrano, Instructional Technology Specialist. So at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to our CTO and, uh, you know, wait for this great presentation. All right, thank you. Thank you, Miguel, and uh, welcome parents to, uh, to Parent University. And uh, we are excited about this opportunity to help you learn a little bit more about the virtual learning platforms we use here in RISD. Uh, and so from the instructional side of technology, uh, we, we know that there are a lot of online resources and tools that teachers use and that varies depending on their, their grade level and the class and the content that they're, they're teaching. So since we have a wide variety of, of folks in our audience tonight, we're gonna focus on the, the top three virtual learning platforms we use here in RISD. And those are Seesaw for our early, uh, our young, young students, pre-K through third grade, Google Classroom for uh, the older kids, and then Zoom. We'll talk a little bit about that and let you know how we use that here in RISD. So uh, leading the presentation tonight, we have uh, Christine Madrano. She's with the I-Team, wave Christine. Uh, and we have Lydia Krupp with the I-Team. Uh, and they're going to be doing the bulk of the presentation for us. And as Miguel mentioned, we have Robin Gunter. She's going to be moderating the chat for us from the instructional technology team. So any questions that uh, arise in the chat, she will be able to, to answer those. And then she'll, she'll share some of those things with us here at the end. And we also have Samantha Hernandez, our manager of learning systems and digital resources, who will be uh, moderating in the Spanish chat. Uh, as well. So we have two members that will be doing that. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Christine and Lydia, and they'll take you through some of these wonderful tools. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Christine Matadano, and I'll be first discussing our, our online learning platform, Seesaw. So on, our, Seesaw is an online learning platform and a parent communication tool. And as Mr. Hall said, it's only for our pre-K through third grade students. So the students in those upper grade levels will not be using Seesaw. Um, our students in our pre-K through third grade uh, levels will be using Seesaw in conjunction with Google Classroom. 
So how it's going to work is that students will still log into a Google Classroom to access their daily and weekly agendas to be able to see the lessons and activities that they need to complete each week. From that agenda, they will then go over to Seesaw to complete the actual activities that the teacher has created. Um, to access Seesaw, students need to tap on Seesaw in their class link that's on their school issued device. And by logging in with their Google username through ClassLink, their classes should automatically load on Seesaw. So parents don't need to access a home learning code in order for them to have their students sign into their teacher's classroom on Seesaw. It should automatically sync when students use their Google username and password to log in through ClassLink and access Seesaw through ClassLink. Parents are also encouraged to download the Seesaw Family app on their personal device to be able to monitor their students' work as well as communicate with their teacher. And a copy of this presentation will be provided to you at the end. And once you have this copy yourself, you'll be able to click on this link, which is a PDF, to five top things to know about Seesaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through that right now. And then we'll actually dive into what students will see as they are working through Seesaw and how to navigate that. So again, we have some uh, instructions that we've created through video to follow along if you need uh, support logging your student in through their classroom Seesaw account. Seesaw will automatically uh, log students into all of their classes. So not just their homeroom, but also their special classes as well. And I'll go ahead and show you what that's going to look like in a moment. Students will be able to view all of their assignments using the journal tab. And again, we have instructions on how you can download the Seesaw Family app on your personal device. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Seesaw will look like for your students. So this is a fake Seesaw account. I don't want anyone to think that this is an actual student Seesaw. This is just a fake account that I created for the purposes of this tutorial. So right when a student logs in, they will be uh, looking at their journal uh, stream. So all of the work that they've submitted and has been approved by their teacher. And as you can see, this uh, student hasn't had any work been approved by their teacher yet, but all of that work that they've submitted throughout the year will automatically pop up in this stream. And it's a really great uh, tool for students to just reflect back on all the work that they've accomplished throughout the year. So in that sense, CISA really does act like a digital portfolio of a student's um, work that they've completed. On the left-hand side, in this upper left-hand corner, uh, students will see their name as well as an icon. When they tap on this, they should have access to all the different classes that they have been registered for. So this is where they will see all of their special classes in addition to their homeroom class. So it's very easy for students to navigate in between the different classes in order to access the different assignments from their different teachers. On the right, we have three tabs, the journal tab, the activities tab, as well as the inbox. When I tap on activities, you'll notice that there's a, a little indicator with the number four. That means I have four activities to complete from my teacher. So if a student does not complete an assignment, um, they will have that indicator light on. So something that I would tell my students is, you know, make sure that there are no numbers by the activities tab, and that's how you'll know you've completed all of your work for the day. In order for a student to respond to an assignment, for example, this one says my favorite summer memory, they would tap on this button that says add response. And you can see all the directions are written out for the assignment. Here's a second uh, example of an assignment. You can see in addition to the text that lists all the directions, there's also an audio feature. So teachers are encouraged to record themselves reading the instructions in order to support our early and young readers. And uh, sometimes there will be a video that goes with the assignment for students to view. So when a student taps add response, it'll take them to either the template that the teacher would like them to complete 
or it'll t take them to um, a choice board of tools for them to choose how to respond to the work and demonstrate their mastery of the content. But as you can see with this example, the teacher has posted a template. So there are a whole slew of different tools at the bottom that the student can use in order to uh, write in their responses, or there's this T tool right here that stands for a text tool, and students can actually type in their responses um, if that's what they would prefer. Below the text tool is the microphone tool for students to submit uh, an oral response, or they can record themselves reading the text, as well as um, taking photos and videos as well. So again, TESOL is a really collaborative tool for students to really think creatively about how to demonstrate mastery of all the different lessons um, within their grade. Once students are done with their assignment, they tap on the check mark in the upper right hand corner to submit. And then that assignment goes to the teacher for review. So you can see right here, there's a blue indicator that says waiting for teacher approval. On the far right for inbox, this is where students can see teacher announcements. So for example, this teacher says, welcome class, I'm so excited to start a brand new school year with you, as well as uh, notifications on feedback that the teacher has posted. So for example, on this assignment, the teacher has posted a comment, you need to finish this assignment, right? The student only completed one uh, part of the work, so they need to go back and finish that up. So you're gonna wanna encourage your students to be cognizant of uh, clicking on those indicator lights in order to make sure that they are responding to teacher feedback and that they are finishing their assignments in a timely manner. You can also see here under the uh, comment section that the teacher has left a uh, recording of, of, of feedback. So uh, again, there's a lot of different ways for teachers to support students uh, who are young learners. So then to uh, actually edit this assignment, the student would finish this up, submit it, and then once the teacher has approved the assignment, then it would show up in the journal. So that's a little run through of what CSAL looks like and what you can um, expect for your students to experience as they're navigating the platform. Uh, again, this is where they would access their different classes. And then just looking out for those indicator lights is a great way to make sure that, that your student is staying on top of their work. Good evening. Okay, I'm gonna walk through Google Classroom in a very similar fashion to what Christine just showed you with Seesaw. So Google Classroom is gonna be very similar to Seesaw and it is um, an online platform. It's a communication tool. It's just gonna look a little different and it's gonna have a few functions that look different from Seesaw but will operate the same way for students. So all grade levels, pre-K through 12, have been asked to have a Google Classroom. The function of that Google Classroom will be different depending on the grade level. And we'll say this again and again, um, because I think there's been some confusion between the two. Pre-K through three, Google Classroom will act as a hub, mostly for parent communication and information with um, the parents can check daily to see what the students' uh, expectations are in terms of activities, but then the students will go over to Seesaw to complete the activities. Whereas for the upper grades, 4 through 12, Google Classroom not only is the hub for parent communication, it is also where students can receive instruction and activities online and return them to the teacher. Okay, so that's the big difference in the pre-K-3 having both platforms, Seesaw and Google Classroom, and then 412 just using Google Classroom. There is an invite guardian feature for Google Classroom that parents may be familiar with from years past. This is still an option. You still are able to receive daily or weekly summaries along with um, mailing the teacher back and forth through Google Classroom. You can still do that. In addition, once the student is logged into Google Classroom, you, the parent, will be able to see the materials posted and the activities posted once your student is logged in so that you can see the work that is being assigned and turned in as well. Students can use 
class link like they would with Seesaw um, to log in, or they can go directly through the classroom app. Either one will work, okay? We, there is also included on this slide a PDF of top five Google Classroom things to know. So in order to log into Google Classroom, you would need your students' RASD Google login and password. The RISD Google login is the student's first initial, last initial, and um, ID number for the, the student ID number for RISD at g.risd.org. Okay, and we have an example in here of what that would look like. The password, I can't, I mean, I don't have every student's password, so there's not one on here. But for the password, if your student doesn't remember what it is, you can contact your campus and they will get you in touch with the person who can help you reset that password, okay? So that's how you will get access into Google Classroom. And I will be showing you these next few numbers here in a minute when we look at the other side of Google Classroom. So when you get into Google Classroom, the two main tabs you want to check out as a parent are the stream and the classwork. And it's the same for your student as well. The stream is where the teacher is going to post announcements or whenever a new assignment is posted that's basically your notification tab so whenever anything new is posted it will show up in the stream and we'll take a look at that here in a minute assignments materials um, uh, any type of like quizzes class discussions those happen in the classwork tab okay this way teachers can organize it by topic and that is where students will receive assignments and turn them in so that's what the second tab, that classwork tab is for. So stream is for announcements, notifications, classwork tab is going to be for the assignments, the materials, things like that. Another thing we're gonna look at here in a minute that a lot of students don't realize is the moment they are in Google Classroom, they get a classroom folder for every class that they're in. This folder will hold all of their assignments that they create in that class. And I will show you what that looks like here in a moment. So if they are in Google Classroom and they can't find the slides they were working on or the document they were working on, they can check their classroom folder in Google Drive and find it in there. And then again, we're going to keep saying this in hopes that it starts making it's a little more clear and we, it makes more sense why there's two platforms for pre-K3. There will be agendas daily posted in Seesaw for parents to, I mean, in, sorry, in Google Classroom with links to Seesaw. This is what we're encouraging teachers to do so that parents understand what is expected of their students. So the parents can see the daily activities in Google Classroom, but then the student can go to Seesaw to complete those activities. Okay, looking inside Google Classroom, I'm gonna show you a teacher side first and then what your student will see, only because there's a small difference and I just want you to understand the difference in what we're looking at. So here I am as a teacher, this is my Google Classroom, okay? I have my stream and you'll notice it does have my announcements. I also have my classwork, okay? In here, I have information, homework, uh, IXL and reading over to the left. These are topics. So when you come into classwork, if I click on one of the topics, it will just isolate the items within that topic, okay? So if you only want to see what the homework is, you could click on that and you could see just homework. If you wanna see all of them together, you go back to all topics. Now, your student's teacher can organize this however they see is best for the student. So just make sure you understand their organization and structure so you can find the information you're looking for. Okay, so stream for announcements, classwork for activities and materials. The biggest difference between teacher view and student view is that students will have stream and classwork and people, but they won't have like grades, right? So the teacher will have grades. Another difference is in the stream and classwork tab, your child will only see what is assigned to them. So for example, if my students are working in small groups and I wanna give each group a different um, article to read or video to watch, the video that your child needs to watch or the article they need to read will be the only thing that posts for your student. The teacher will see all of it, but your student will only see that one. 
And then the last thing I want to show you is what I mentioned in Google Drive, that folder. So right here is my classroom folder that automatically is created once I have a Google Classroom. And if your child opens it, all their classes should have their own folder. I have a lot, but your child will have whatever classes they have this year or have had in the past. Once they're in this one of once they are in their classroom folder, if they were to open one of these folders, all their work that they did, their Google Docs they created or their Google Slides or anything like that will be in that folder. If they attach something, it'll be in that folder. So remember, if your child opens an assignment and they're creating a Google Slides and then they leave that assignment and they try to come back later and they open it and they're panicking because it's blank, have them check this folder because the one they originally were working on will be in this folder. Okay. Okay, so that's Google Classroom and Christine will take it back for Zoom. Thank you, Lydia. So Zoom, I'm sure, is a platform we're all very quickly becoming acquainted with. Uh, so some things to know about Zoom. Students are expected to log into Zoom every day to participate in live instruction with their teachers and classmates. Uh, and this is very important uh, in order for students to learn new material and also just to have um, that simulated experience of having that face-to-face -face interactions with teachers and students that I know we're all sorely missing now. So we wanna make sure that we provide this opportunity for all of our students. And so we're gonna go over some best practices for uh, participating on live Zoom sessions. First, students do not need to create a Zoom account or use an email to log in. Each student will be provided a join code by their classroom teacher in order to access these daily Zoom sessions. So please do not have your student create a Zoom account. Uh, they do not need to use their emails. They will be given a unique join code. And uh, we also encourage parents to assess the learning environment for students while they're using Zoom. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and look at some recommendations for things to look for in order to create the optimal learning environment while participating on Zoom sessions. So these are just some suggestions. I'm sure there's a lot more that we could add to this list, but we want to encourage all parents to think about the best way to serve their students in order for them to be able to get the most out of those Zoom experiences. So uh, one thing that I want to, want to note is to assess the environments that your student's going to be in. So Minimizing any distractions that might take away your student's attention from the lesson, which could include, you know, loud noises or things going on in the background that maybe won't distract them, but might distract their classmates if they're uh, being viewed on screen, right? So no, nothing crazy happening in the background. And uh, we also recommend students to possibly use headphones, just like I'm using right now. This way, they're not, uh, again, distracted by any background noise. If you have a, a household with more than one student who's uh, participating in a live Zoom session simultaneously, it might be a good idea to have them sit farther apart. That way, their teachers aren't hearing each other uh, on the Zoom classes. Again, this is just something that has happened you know, before that we've learned from experiences. So if they can sit farther apart, that would um, help with minimizing distractions. Of course, we want students to follow dress code procedures while they're participating on Zoom. So, you know, if they wouldn't wear it to school, they probably shouldn't wear it while on a Zoom. And uh, all these other things like food, pets, uh, saving that for maybe after the Zoom call would be best uh, just because as a former second grade teacher, I know how quickly our young learners can get distracted. So we want to make sure that, again, we're making the most of their time with their teacher during that live synchronous interaction. We would also encourage uh, students to log in to their join codes about one to five minutes before the start of the Zoom session. And this is just to ensure that we can avoid any technical difficulties that may arise. 
Uh, so that way the entire class can be as prompt as possible and the teacher can start with the welcomes and, and start with the lesson and in, in a timely manner. Um, I'd like to also go over the five things to know about Zoom. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that PDF. And again, this will be available to you at the end of today's session. You'll have the opportunity to receive a copy of all of these slides uh, that have so many resources for you to, to look to for support. So again, students should not create Zoom accounts. And I say that so many times because it is oh so important that they do not create their own accounts. Um, so again, they're expected to join daily in these live instructional uh, Zoom sessions. So uh, as students are transitioning to a virtual learning environment, we understand that combining their home space with their workspace can be difficult and challenging. But we encourage students to try to set a schedule for themselves in order to hold themselves accountable to these uh, Zoom sessions. So you know, making sure that your student wakes up uh, before their Zoom class starts and preferably not, you know, five minutes before, but they have time to collect themselves, get ready for the day and um, join that classroom welcome in the morning. I think it's very important. So uh, just abiding by those live synchronous blocks according to your student schedule, maybe highlighting that, noting that, you know, we need to provide a little bit of a buffer time for my student to get ready for that learning block, I think is a uh, smart idea. Um, we've talked about minimizing distractions. So uh, if you have a place in your home where you can allocate for your student to join Zoom uh, daily, uh, that might be a good idea, something to think about. Uh, having proper lighting. So right now I'm sitting by a window to try to illuminate my face so that my teacher could be able to see me, right? We want all of our teachers to be able to engage with our students. Um, you know, the best way that we can. Uh, I know some of our students may be a little bit shy, but encouraging them to show their lovely face on camera, I think it's a great way for them to get to know their teachers as well as their classmates. Um, and of course, making sure that your student is signing into their Zoom session with their name. And I know we have a lot of very creative students who want to maybe put in their usernames or their game names and I'm sure that's you know perfectly fine for other things, but again, for Zoom, we're wanting them to put in their real names again because many of our students are interacting with these classmates for the first time. They're meeting their teachers for the first time, so we want them to share their real names. All um, of these resources, as well as so much more, are available to you on Parent Corner and Student Corner, which we have linked on all of these handouts. So we encourage all of our families to look to those sites for any questions that they have concerning best practices for Zoom, navigating Seesaw, as well as uh, communicating with teachers and supporting our students throughout this year. And again, we have uh, those links right here, as well as, sorry, Lydia, as well as a QR code that um, you may scan with your personal device. So if you have a camera app, you can go ahead and scan that QR code, or you can write down this URL, the bit.ly URL right here underneath the QR code uh, to access this, these presentations and all of the links and resources. And that URL is case, sorry, honey, is case sensitive. So if the letter is capital, it will need to be capital when you type it in. If it's lowercase, it will need to be lowercase. All right. Thank you, Christine and Lydia. That was a lot of information. And again, you don't have to try to, parents, you don't have to try to remember it all. You can get this presentation uh, and use it for future references. Uh, I asked Robin Gunter to now jump online and share with us anything from the chat that uh, she feels like would uh, be beneficial for the larger group. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Hall. So we had a lot of great questions, a lot of access questions. So if you, I just want everybody to remember, if they um, are having specific access questions, please reach out to your teacher, reach out to your campus administration. Um, there is support on 
the campus, it may just be getting that name to you so that you can reach out to them um, specifically. The same with device issues. If there's a hardware issue, your campus will also help you with that. So be sure and um, keep that line of communication open between you and the campus. Um, also, we had one question about ClassLink. Um, that was one that we didn't talk about, but ClassLink is kind of our portal for Richardson ISD for our students and teachers. Um, that's how they will access many things, like Seesaw that Christine talked about. You, uh, our students can log into ClassLink and then easily get to Seesaw. So I didn't want there to be some confusion. It is a, it is a separate platform, but it is um, a single sign-on portal for our students and teachers. Hmm. Thank you, thank you, Robin. All right, so Miguel, we're gonna turn it over to you to, uh, to, to wrap us up, thank you. Thank you, uh, Henry. Gosh, lots of information, but great information. A great information, I team, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing this wonderful information that will help our families, uh, help their students succeed. So, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, we're gonna work together and we're going to do all that we can to help our families, uh, you know, help our children. Uh, at this time, what I'd like to do to conclude the, the session is I, would, I want to share with you a great resource uh, for parents. Uh, it is called Parent Corner, and you can access it uh, by going to the Richardson ISD uh, website. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I mean, I'm, I'm going to navigate to Parent Corner because I want to share this wonderful resource uh, that families can access. Okay, so here we go. Share the screen. And let me go here. All right, we're going to go to Richardson Home. And here we go. Let me move my image out of the way so that I can navigate a little bit better. All right, so here we are. If you look on the right of the web page, you're going to see Parent Corner. All you do, click on it, and voila, here we go. Very nice. We're going to scroll down. We've got a menu, but we're going to we're going to learn more about. Uh, parent corner, if we'll just keep scrolling, uh, you can start accessing a lot of the information. Uh, you can take it a different way. You can also go to the menu and look at uh, the tabs here to access some of this. So as you can already tell, there's some great information about, you know, uh, the digital tools and resources, parent university, uh, parent resources, and the risd.org tab will take us right back to um, our web page. Uh, what I want to share with you um, and just open some of this up for you to see is that you can see a lot of what uh, the I-Team has just shared with you and you can open up these links and, and go in there and uh, find the tools, find the information that you need to get some answers. So just uh, take some time to go through this and, uh, you know, learn a little bit more. Uh, let's go to the Parent University tab. This is where you're gonna find a recording of this particular session. So like Henry said, don't, if there's a lot of information sometimes to, you know, process, it's okay. You can hit that little reverse little button, just go back and, you know, view it again a few times. I do that all the time. So it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna work great for you. And so, um, the next thing that uh, I want to open up for you uh, that's going to be really important are our parent resources. So our parent resources um, are critical as we try to stabilize some things around the house, you know, make sure that uh, we can access district resources. Uh, we've got the RISD mobile app that we can download that will give us instructions on how to do that. So this is going to be a great place to find those those resources. Uh, so please take a little bit of time to, to go in there and, um, you know, get informed. So that's, um, I just, that's going to do it for this part. I'm going to go ahead and close this out by first and foremost telling everyone, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time 
to watch to watch this session to be part of this uh, session. Gracias a cada uno de ustedes que participó en estas en esta uh, lección o sesión este les les queremos agradecer ustedes son valora, valorados y apreciados tengan muy buenas tardes thank you again you're greatly valued and appreciated and uh, we want you to have a wonderful wonderful evening so we'll see you at the next uh, parent university session thank you have a great day great evening